a moment that this issue of discrimination would be the issue on which my generation would make our stand, as the previous generation had made their stand on the Vietnam War. And in my country, the generation before that had made a stand against nuclear weapons. But this issue, anti-racism, anti-discrimination, was going to define our, our generation. Because it wasn't that day, it wasn't only about anti-racism. Uh, anti uh, there were gay uh, men marching as well. It was, uh, it was against discrimination of all kinds. And when, when, the, when the event finished, um, I went to, uh, to catch the subway train back to where I lived with my mother. And the trains were still running. And I got to my hometown, and it had not been reduced to rubble. And I went to my mum's house, and she made me the same meal she always made on Sunday, liver and bacon. And the world had not changed. The world was exactly as it was when I entered the park. But what had changed was my perspective of the world. And I do not think, were it not for that day, I would not be sitting here speaking to you this afternoon. And when I went back to work on Monday morning, I knew I was not in a minority. I knew why I was different from these men. I knew why, where the, the generation gap was. And, and since then I've tried to live up to the ideas that first came together in the park that day. So I know from personal experience that although music cannot change the world, it can change your perspective of the world. And I have that in mind every night when I walk out onto the stage. I have the opportunity today to change the perspective of someone in the audience, perhaps to give them the uh, tools with which to build an argument against the racist bullies or the, the, you know, maybe they're in their family home or in their college or in their workplace. I have the potential to do that. So that that is, I think, if you choose to take that role, that is the role that, that you can play. I mean, there are other things you can do. Obviously, you can, you can bring people together to raise money, to express solidarity. But if we're talking about changing things, then it is about trying to uh, challenge the perception of the members of your audience that you have for that couple of hours there in the dark you have the opportunity, or to make them feel that they are not alone. You know, you, you come to a gig and you meet other people who are uh, involved in the same kind of activism as you are. It kind of recharges your batteries. I think that's, that, that to me, that was my experience. And that's how it translates into, into what I do. Vielen Dank, äh, Billy. Gesellschaft, wo wir das scheinbar bloß noch so definieren können. Äh, alles andere hat einen gewissen, eine gewisse Art von Plumpheit. Weil das Politische als Begriff ist natürlich subsumiert von politischen Parteien, von politischen Richtungen. Aber das ist nicht das, worum es in der Kunst und Politik geht. Da geht es immer um den Entwurf einer Gerechtigkeit und dass man den Zustand als unaushaltbar beschreibt, auf Kosten anderer zu leben oder ein Unrecht zu akzeptieren in dieser Welt. Und diese Unaushaltbarkeit entfesselt in mir einen Zorn, den ich sozusagen umsetzen muss und den ich in eine, äh, ja, in eine Form bringen muss, um den, um den Leuten das nahe zu bringen. Ich habe in, im vorigen Sommer ein interessantes Konzert gehabt in, in der Türkei, in Dersin, also in, in, im kurdischen Gebiet, ein Gebiet, das noch mal äh, mehr besetzt ist als die Türkei selbst, also man braucht mal ein Visum, wenn man dort hineinkommt. Das ist ein riesengroßes Festival, 100.000 Leute. Das ist eine äh, 
Gesellschaft, die mehr oder weniger äh, übersehen wird. Eine Kultur, es sind alle Witten, es sind also keine Muslime, es sind äh, Kurden und es sind zum Teil Armenier, die dort leben, also die, die übrig geblieben sind nach dem ganzen Massaker. Und ich hatte, als ich dort gespielt habe, ein unglaublich archaisches Gefühl, was Musik und was Lied eigentlich für ein Lebensmittel sein kann. Ich bin sehr ins Zweifel gekommen und dachte, das, was wir hier machen, ist mehr oder weniger doch ein Zeitvertreib für reiche Leute, die sich letzten Endes in der Ewigkeit ein klein wenig langweilen. Aber dieses Archaische, als ich das gesehen habe, wusste ich, es ist auch der Ursprung, es ist bloß verdeckt. Es ist, dass wir uns sozusagen gegen eine, wir nennen es jetzt Globalisierung oder wie auch immer eine Gleichmacherei des Marktes zur Wehr setzen, dass wir um unsere Individualität kämpfen, sowohl künstlerisch gegen den Mainstream, als auch individuell, wie wir empfinden, wie wir lieben, was wir schön finden. Das ist ein Kampf gegen die Maschinerie eines unglaublich aggressiven Marktes, der alles gleich machen will und alles zu Effizienz und zu Geld verwandeln will. Und diesen sich zu widersetzen, ist, glaube ich, ein, in, in dieser globalisierten Welt eine unglaubliche Aufgabe für eine politische Kunst. But that opportunity to say that, had I been had I been squeamish about becoming in and getting involved with what the politicians were trying to do, had I been squeamish, I would never have had that opportunity. <coughs> and that opportunity was too valuable. And to tell you the truth, when we were thrown out of the country on the flight back to Amsterdam, I was very sad. I was very sad because I knew that those people, because the pressure, it seemed to me that the pressure was going on in February 1989. And to those people that I had that valuable opportunity to talk to, I now, I'd, I'd stepped over. The thing, the thing for us was we, we were not aware, as people in the DDR were, aware, aware every day exactly where the line was, that you don't step over. We weren't aware of that. And we kind of pushed ourselves over that line in trying to, to, to articulate what we thought was going on. And I deeply, deeply regret it on the way back of, of stepping over that line because I felt I'd lost that opportunity. If I'd have thought of another way to do it, maybe I would have. But, you know, looking back now, it makes me seem like a hero that I stood up to them. But actually, to be honest with you, I, on the way on, off on the plane, I felt I'd let down those people here in the DDR that I used to speak to and I used to see. I felt I'd left them now to the, to the power of the state. It was a very bitter, bitter taste. Before we are in 